Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Clint's. Wait, hang on a second. From the bar. I bet I was the first person to blow their nose in a vlog. Prove me wrong. So this girl comes up. I make her a drink in this cup. And I put it down and she goes, I hope that isn't $5. And I was like, why? And she goes, well, because, you know, it's in such a small cup. And I go, check this out, hon. See this rocks glass of water? This is filled to the top. Let's just do a little test. Are you kidding me? Look at that. I mean, there's like four gulps in there. So what do you want? You want the pretty glass or you want the plastic cup with a lot more liquid in it, okay? So stop your complaining, baby. Let's see, what do we have here? Check this out. This little pet peeve, bartender pet peeve I got for you. The Grey Goose bottle. Have you ever tried to open this thing? I mean, it's a pain in the ass. It's got this little thing right here that you gotta peel off and when it's busy and you're trying to open this thing, it's, it's insane. So I'm not just gonna do this for you, okay? You gotta get the edge right there and you gotta be real careful to peel it off. All right, okay, there's 20 people waiting for drinks and you gotta get it just right. Guess what, guess what? Oh. No, okay, you got this. Okay, you're screwed. You got this little thing right here. Then you gotta pick at it, you gotta pick at it. Oh my God, okay, okay, I got it, all right, I got it. Okay, yeah, see, that takes five minutes. And then you gotta twist it off. Fine, you got your Grey Goose bottle. Can we do something else besides that little peel thing? <laughs> Guys, Grey Goose people, okay, work on that, all right? People ask me, we had this hanging up for years, probably 10 years, it's a mallet. People ask me, What's that mallet for? And I say, for difficult customers. Anyway, what else do we have here? You know what? I'm writing a story. I'm working on it about your drink. Do you ever think about your drink? You know that drink, your go-to drink that you always drink? I know for me it was a gin and tonic for the longest time. Tank tonic, tank ray tonic with a lime. That's all I drank for like 10 years. I don't even know what, how it started. I think I was at a party and somebody or a bar somewhere and somebody ordered me a Tanqueray tonic and I tasted it and I loved it. Oh, and I, by the way, tonic has high fructose corn syrup in it. Don't, don't let it fool you, okay? Those all, everything on the gun pretty much has sugar in it. You know, you're thinking, oh, it's, it's, uh, it's clear. It's not as bad for you. No, no, it's bad. Anyway. I want you to think about your drink for a second. There, that's the second. I want you to think about why do you order that drink? What's the story behind it? I want you to come in, and if there's a lull and I'm not helping anybody, let's get on a conversation and talk about your drink, because I'm going to write an article about it. This is going to be an article. This isn't going to be like two, two paragraphs. This is going to be like five pages on why do people choose their drink and they keep on drinking. I know I have my boy uh, Phil Young in the house. He always orders a Schlitz and he told me his story. Might use it in, this, in, in, my, in my little uh, article there. So I want you to think about why do you drink that whiskey Coke, that whiskey diet Coke? I know Mickey Davis loves whiskey diets. Sorry I couldn't make you that old fashioned on Saturday. It was insane busy and I appreciate it. I appreciated your understanding. Anyway, that's an insight. So think about your drink. Why do you drink that drink? Okay, weekend wrap up. You see how I'm, I'm cruising through this baby. This guy last night, Tony Sean, told me, it's so long, your vlog. And I'm like, I know, it's vlog, it's long, it's vlog. It's vlog and it's long. You know, it's just like, I can't, I need a producer here. Does anybody produce these things? Can anybody help me? I'm in a, I'm in a empty, empty bar right now. I got nobody to help me out here. I'm doing it myself. Tell me, you got you to do that. Wait, what's the thing? What's the thing? It's like, wrap it up, wrap it up, something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, let's do the weekend wrap up. Great bands played 
played this weekend, Friday night. I'm telling. I'm going to tell you the highlight is was Brooks Strauss and the gory details. They had seven people on stage. Brooks Strauss. I don't know if you know anything about him. He's usually a solo artist. I think he's from Iowa. I think he's from Iowa City. Could be wrong, but he usually plays an acoustic guitar. And you know what? I really have have never connected to it because he's been on stage and there's always like 20 people. 20 people watching him, and so I can't even see what's going on, and he plays real quiet. So I'm like, but there's some hype. There's some hype about this guy. So I never really, I never really connected with it. And then uh, Friday night, he played with a band. He played with Dylan Sires. He has another band, and I tell you, they were absolutely phenomenal. First off, the, the first uh, story, uh, the first song, this reminded me of some Tom Waits, some kind of circus music, that beat. And then they got, I, I imagined them on Saturday Night Live, like in the 70s, like kind of on the Elvis Costello tip. I was talking to him afterwards. He kind of seems like a shy guy, introverted, intellectual poet, I guess. But the uh, guy is really amazing. The rhythm section, I'm going to give a shout out to Ross and Graham. You guys were incredible. I got to, I, actually, I stopped. Uh, there was a lull. It was like 1 o'clock. And let me tell you something. It was 1 o'clock. I was here at 3. I heard like 20 bands that night, so I'm, my ears were burned out, and I still loved them. I went up on the side of the stage. I could hear the rhythm section really good, so they were kicking ass on that. Check them out. Next time they played, I was talking, I was talking to Brooks. I said, you got to keep this going. I love the full band thing, so I think they were the highlight of the weekend. I'm just going to do one band. That's it. Every vlog, one band. In and out, baby. Okay. This, I'm so excited about. I, I, I'm, I'm not bullshitting you. I am so excited about this. Check this out. I wrote a story once about some creative ways where you can sell your, sell your music to people when you're playing in a music venue. Okay, what do we do? We record an album, we get a CD going, we get a record, we get a tape, and then we come to our CD release party, a record release party, and we sell the CDs. Check this out. Who wants CDs anymore? Nobody's got CD players anymore, okay? <laughs> Nobody wants CDs. They don't want to be carrying around CDs. But what does happen? People get hungry, okay? You're at the, you're at the music venue. You're drinking beer. God, some chips, wouldn't they taste good right now? Oh, wait. Oh, you know what? I got a, I got a candy craving. I want some Skittles. Guess what? This is what you do, bands. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. You get a bag, you get a box of those chips. You tape on your download card. You know what I'm saying? On the chips, you charge $6 for the chips. They're like, hey, you know what? I'm getting a download card of their music, and I'm getting a bag of chips out of the deal. I'm, I'm serious. Please do this. Just do it. Listen to me. Get some snacks, pop your download card on it, okay? Then you're going to sell more music. Nobody wants to carry around CDs anymore. i got tons of CDs at home, okay? I just, you got to think efficiency here, people, and this is where I'm coming to. This band played tonight, Nevada, Nevada. They're from Nevada, Iowa. The chick singer is from Nevada, Iowa, so Nevada, Nevada, okay? And guess what they had? These, this takes it to another level. The drummer, Dave Olson, who used to play for Poison Control Center and also Mantis Pincers, sick, amazing guy, really a sweetheart. He makes, uh, he makes homemade candy in New York City. And this is a sucker. Check this out. Homemade sucker. Uh, Pat Tate Fleming bought it for me. Thanks, Pat, for my birthday tomorrow. What's up, 43? So homemade, homemade sucker, right? Guess what? Oh, what do you see on the, on the back of that? Yep, download card. Well, this is cute. They actually, if you want to download it, you have to text the singer, and then she sends, please send, uh, please send me the download, whatever. And uh, her number is, you can barely read it on there, it's 347-712-8024. Once again, you'll see it scrolling down on the screen. No, you won't. 347-712-2024. Check it out. Get their music. But, I mean, come on, guys. Let's go, bands. Do this. Snacks, tape the download card on there. Boom, you're going to make a ton of money. What else we got here? Oh, this was funny. So Saturday night, 
right? This band Jucifer's gonna play. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Jucifer before? Oh, you haven't? Look it up, see what they do, okay? They have speakers up to the top of the ceiling. I'm not kidding you. Speakers up the top of the, all the way over to the side of the stage, both sides of the stage. It's insane, okay? And guess what? Does it sound folky, folky music? No, no. It's a guitarist, and it's a drummer, and it's loud as hell, okay? I mean, your ears bleed, bleeding down your face, okay? I've seen them a couple times. You know, they are something to see. Let me tell you something. I've seen them. I'm happy to say they're not bad, but they're loud, okay? So there's the backstory. My boy TJ, Vaudeville Muse, The Lift. I work at both bars, same owner, okay? Sometimes I work at The Lift. Sometimes I work at the Vaudeville Muse. So I'm working at the Vaudeville Muse on Saturday night for the Juicefer, the Juicefer show, okay? So TJ texted me at 7 o'clock. He says, hey, do you want to work at the Lift tonight? We switch, and I work at the Vaudeville Muse. I want to see Juicifer play. And I thought about it for a second, and I thought about my ears and what my ears would like. And I thought about an enjoyable night making martinis. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, I'll let you work the Juicifer show. So I went down the lift. He said, I got it all set up for you, ready to go. I'm like, beautiful. I don't even have to set up the bar. What's up? So I get down there. Work the night. It's an awesome night. Have a great time with my girl, Lisa. We have, we have a, a great night. People are having fun. She takes off at 12 o'clock, and then I get slammed, so I make tons of money. It was great. And I kick ass on the clothes. I get out of there by ni- uh, two, uh, 2.45, right? And I get a text from TJ. Hang on a second. Second time, two times. So I get a text from TJ, and he's like, oh, how was your night? I text back, yeah, it was great. Had a great time. How was yours? And he goes, oh, still here. Uh, uh, Jucifer locked their keys in their trailer. This is 2.45 in the morning. I'm like, okay, the bartender has to stick around. You can't just leave this band here. So today I see him. I go, oh, how, what, what time are you uh, at, the, at the bar still? And he goes, 5.15. <laughs> they had to call a locksmith. The locksmith... Uh, they call back and they're like, okay, we're on 4th Street. Um, yeah, we're, we're at 4th Street. What are you talking about? 4th Street, well, we're on 4th Street between Java Joe's and the Royal Mall. We're at, oh, uh, Boise, Idaho, right? <laughs> <laughs> so comp- it was a national chain of locksmiths, so no, no. By the time the locksmiths got, got here, it was like 4 o'clock, right? And they got all these speakers to load in. So they, And the guy, it takes them an hour to crack open this, this heavy-duty lock. So it's like, they were here, and he was here until 5.15 anymore. And I was chilling at home, peeping out some Netflix, drinking a caliber. It was beautiful. Sorry, TJ. Appreciate you switching with me. What's up? Anyway, hey, that's it. I'm going to call it a day. This is Clint's vlog from the bar. Oh, I got some insider scoop today from, from one of my buddies. Not going to say his name, so hey, I can't, I can't get him in trouble. But he works for a political campaign. He's worked for a couple political campaigns uh, in the state of Iowa. And he has a girlfriend that started to work on the Hillary campaign in Iowa City. And he told me on the down low that Hillary's going to announce her candidacy for, for president in about two to three weeks. So you hear the first baby. And if, if I die from, from some CIA or FBI thing in the next week, or if I die, you'll know that the CIA came after me for giving you that information. Anyway, what's up? Okay, that's all I got here. Actually, you know, I didn't want to say this. I didn't want to tell you this because, you know, I want this, I want, I want you to think that I'm telling you the truth, okay? And I did tell you the truth, but there's a one thing that I, uh, I I'm kind of, I kind of held held back on you, and that is, what you see behind you. It's not a bar; it's actually a set. Uh, so, we're not actually at the Vaudeville Muse. We're this is we're on an airplane, and this is just the set, the facade. We're in a jet airplane. And so I gotta, I gotta go. I'm, I'm flying out. This is flying to Paris, and I gotta. And we're not stop. It's a nonstop. So I'm gonna parachute out of here. So thank you so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. 
Uh, check me out next time. If you want to see me, come see me at the Vaudeville Muse or the Lift on Wednesday, Thursday. All right, peace out. Got to <coughs> put on my, my backpack here. Here my, my uh, okay. Um, I'll see you next time. See ya. Yeah, open up the hatch there. Okay, I'm ready. Thanks. I'll see you later. Bye. Oh! <laughs>